You'll need to excuse the nerves. I'm quite nervous, so I'm, it's a long time since I've spoke to a crowd. So, I, was, so I just want to pray first before we start. Lord, we just come to you this afternoon, and we just think of that story we've just heard, Lord, and how these men were willing to give up their life for you, Lord. And we just think of today, Lord, and people still are willing to give up their lives for you, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that somebody here today would just listen and hear the story, Lord, and truly give their life over to you, Lord. Uh, we just pray, Lord, also for people that already know you, Lord, but seem so far away at this time, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would just really speak to them also, Lord, and you would just return them back to you, that they might know you. So, Lord, we just commit it to you this afternoon, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to tell you a wee bit of my life, so I'm, but uh, more, more importantly, I want to talk about since I've got saved. Uh, but I'll start off with a wee bit of just beforehand so you know where I've came from. Uh, I was adopted at the age of three into a Christian home. I ran away, I didn't like the Christian home, I, I denied God, I did everything to hate God. Uh, and I joined the army at the age of 16, so I did. I get a dishonourable just discharge four years later, and I ended up, it was through drugs and alcohol, I got I get a dishonourable discharge. So from there I went and met my real parents, so I did, and from there my life just went totally downhill, so I did. Uh, I started using drugs, so I did. Uh, it wasn't, at that point it wasn't hard drugs, it was, well, it was speed, cannabis, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then eventually I get, started getting to jail through it for shoplifting and things. Uh, and then, and then more, one point in my life I really went downhill and God, God started speaking to me. Even, I was brought up in a Christian home, but yet, even though I was brought up in that Christian home and I, I wanted to hate everything about God, uh, there, was some, there was a seed in me. So there was, they kept on going past a, a local church where, where I was brought up in Wisha. Well, where I, my mother was and my real mum was in Wisha. And I found out where the wee gospel hall was. And every Sunday morning, I used to walk past it to make sure the Christians were still there. Because I believed that one day God, even in my heart, even though I didn't want God in my life, I believed in my heart that one day God was going to come back and take the Christians because I'd been taught that from an early age. So I was, and the seed was planted. And even though I was in that state of denying God, there was still this part of me that wanted to know God. Then, uh, about three years later, uh, about three years later, God started uh, speaking to us really severely. And what happened was, I was in, the, in my adoptive mum's home and a seed sore came through the door. I think there's some at the back if anybody wants them. Uh, it was John 3 and 16 it was on it. So it was, and my wee brother, because it was done in Old English writing, uh, he couldn't read it. So what I did, he, he came in, he picked it up and showed me and says, what does that say? And I, I turned around and says, I don't know. Uh, so I took, took the seed sore up, upstairs to the toilet. Uh, this is so vivid in my mind, so it is. Uh, and I, I ripped the seed sore up. I read the track first, and by this time I was getting paranoid delusions, so I was that people were, were starting to chase me from old life, and uh, I was really just getting paran a lot of paranoid attacks. And I read this track, and I, I, it said at the bottom of it, what I believed it said was, if you don't accept Jesus Christ today as your saviour, then that's it, no other chance will be given. And I took that track and I ripped it up and I says, I don't want anything to do with God. And for some, something happened in my life that day that I'll never forget. I, I felt that God left me. So I, did, I really felt that God wanted no more to do with me. So I, did, I felt that, that that was it, I'd, I'd let my life go. And from there my, my, my whole life just went totally downhill. I ended up in a caravan that was uh, covered in dampness, so it was. Uh, and in fact, I, I stayed with the travellers, and the travellers took the caravan away, 
and they, they tore it down and says we wouldn't even live in a place like that. It was that damp, it had no windows in it. I was just really dawson. By that time, I'd started to uh, mess about with uh, like heroin and whatnot. So uh, one, of these day, one, one day I was going down to Monkles and uh, by this time I was getting really suicidal. So I was uh, just what the drugs make you do, you know, it's just that uh, you end up it's messing a bit with your brain, so it is. And drugs are just going to destroy it, so they are. Uh, it's, not, it's not worth even trying them because it's so dangerous. So uh, you don't know what's going to happen with your life. Uh, so I took, I was going to my uncle's and he, he was dealing at the time, so he was, and uh, he wouldn't give me anything. He says that tra the travellers that I'd been hanging about with had come in and robbed them. So he chased me out of his house and I remember saying to myself, this is it. So I was, I'm going to, I'm finishing my life because I was fed up with it. So I was, I was fed up just with the whole thing in my life just crashing down round about me. Uh, I didn't feel God in my life at all. Uh, I just, I'd ripped up Bibles. I'd, I'd, deny, I'd denied God altogether at this point in my life. And as I was walking up, to, to go to the caravan site that, that I was staying in. Uh, I remember saying to myself, this is it. And then I was just coming to this phone box and something clicked in my mind that I was going to phone my adoptive parents at this time and blame them for all my, my troubles. It was nobody's fault but my own fault, but I wanted to blame somebody for my life. So I picked up the telephone and I couldn't remember their number. Uh, eventually I managed to get the number, so I don't know how it came to my mind, it was just God given I suppose, uh, and I phoned this number, uh, and I got another adoptive sister, I got, uh, there was quite a few of us adopted into that family, and she answered the phone, and she says to us, uh, can I, can, I says, is my mum and dad there, and you speak to them. Uh, and she says, no, they're away out. Uh, I'll go and get Ian, who is Ian up there, uh, to, to come in and speak to you. I says, no, I don't want to speak to anybody else. I just want to speak to them. But by this time, she'd went and managed to get Ian. It was all just the time of everything was just totally amazing, you know. It was just, like, unbelievable how God really, all the timing seemed to just slot in so perfectly. And yet, it's just... Like, how could it be? Because we're talking that Ian, Ian and Mary were at least half an hour's journey away, maybe more, 45 minutes. Uh, and, and when Ian came on the phone, he started speaking to me, and I don't even know what he said. I don't I had no clue what he said. But I walked out of that telephone, and I believe in my heart of hearts, God <coughs> spoke to me in a way I'd never been, I've never been spoken to since. There have not, and God showed me a vision. So I did, and I get down on my knees and I asked the Lord into my life in the middle of this main street. So I was uh, where I, the cars were passing. Uh, they must have thought I was mental at this point. Uh, and I started. I say, uh, and for some reason, I knew God had entered my life. I just knew God had come into my life because my whole body was filled with with so much love so it was I suppose it was just towards him for what he had done for us uh, and I started walking out the town uh, of Wisho and as I'm walking out I, I remember uh, there's always a, there was a verse came to my mind and I, I hadn't really read the Bible but this verse came to my mind it's, uh, it was remember Lot's wife and how she turned back into the town and she turned into a pillar of salt uh, we were doing that in the Bible study not so long ago, the youth one, and uh, I remember that coming to my mind, and I'm coming to, and the, the devil's really saying, saying to me, you know, how good are you? you couldn't be a Christian, look what you've done all your life, you've destroyed so many people, you've destroyed your life, you know, you've been in and out of jail, you, you, you're an addict, you you had everything, you know, and, and I was coming to this roundabout, which was literally 15, 10 minutes, 15 minutes walking distance from the, the phone box. Um, and then Ian came round the corner, and I was just ready to cross over, and that, if I'd crossed over, I believe I wouldn't have been here today. But Ian, Ian came in, 
and he took me took uh, he took me up to Auckland Lake and I stayed with Steve for a bit. Now I became a Christian there and you think, oh that's that's it, you know, I'm a Christian now, you know, but life as a Christian for me has been very, very hard. So I was it's been very hard in my family, so I was uh, and I, you know <laughs> I'm just trying to watch what I say because there's so many things happening in my life. From there, I started working, so I, did, I, was, I was really a fit, healthy man, what I thought was fit and healthy. Uh, and I was, I was always medicated, so I, I did come off the, the, the medication, uh, but only for a time. I started working, and I realised I was, I was in a lot of pain working, so I did. Uh, and things just get, get worse and worse, so I started taking more and more medication to uh, thing with the, to sort the pain out. Eventually, a, a year later, I get married after being a, becoming a Christian, uh, and it wasn't long after I got married that I started taking the medication uh, for pain. So then I became self-employed, and, and it was just really, it was, it was hard, hard work and self-employed, you know, and it really took, a, took us through an awful lot of hard times, so it did. Uh, and we ended up losing the house, we had to get rid of the house and we moved into a rented one. So we had, uh, things just went downhill for me. Uh, at the beginning I really was all for God. So I, was, I really loved the Lord so much and I really praised God all the time. But because I became so busy with life, it became less and less. So I, did, I, I prayed less, I read less. I worship God less, and and I, and life just just sort of went on, and eventually kids came along, and I was self I, I was still self employed at this point, uh, and I was still taking I was taking more and more medication every day, so I was I was going to the doctors and the doctors were just like uh, hand me tramadol after tramadol, and they weren't willing to look into what was wrong with me. Uh, so then I, I, I eventually moved to another doctor uh, and, and he says, oh, you've got a bad back, uh, just take medication for it. But it wasn't in my back, it was my legs that were sore. So it was, uh, and, I took it, and he says, oh, it's coming for your back. So I believed that and I just took the medication to support that. And, and really, I think the medication over the years has dulled me to God. So it has, it's really, really dulled my my to be sensitive to what he wants for my life. So it was, and I, I haven't really been able to hear what he's wanting to say to me. Uh, and because of that, I read less, I prayed less. And, and the less I did that, the more my family, the more suffering it came in my family. So it did, because I, be, I was starting to become the person I used to be. I wasn't the person my wife married. Uh, and I really took her through a hard time, uh, and I really sort of, uh, you know, destroyed her at that point, you know. And at times we felt that, that it was the end of our marriage because we had, you know, I was just, I w I'd ended up drinking back and forward and, and doing things that I, I know I shouldn't have. But, but I just felt that there was nothing in my life. I felt that, that God wasn't doing anything with my life. You know, and I was just so in so much pain all the time, and eventually, uh, I went to, I moved to another doctor, and and he he asked me if I'd ever been in the army, and I told him yeah, I was in the army, I'd served in. He asked if I'd ever served in the Gulf War, and I says I I did a full tour of of the Gulf in the first Gulf War. And he says, well, I'm wanting to look into uh, what's known as Gulf War illness, but he says that, that it isn't a recognised illness, that it's not within the government, because they're not wanting to admit to it. Uh, and then he, he came back maybe a month later, uh, and he had two doctors, he'd spoke to another two doctors, and they had said, definitely this is Gulf War illness, because I'd been for so many scans at this point, nothing was showing up. And they were they're now saying that's where it is. Uh, and it's just basically, I don't know, it just destroys your bones, I suppose. So it is. 
leaves you in so much pain all the time. Uh, and, and because of the pain, I was just really, I was, I was just in agony constantly, but yeah, I try to fight it constantly with work. And, co and the more I, I worked, the more medication I took. Uh, and the more medication I took, the more when I got home, it was just really, uh, I was just really so frustrated and angry all the time. Uh, and I just, you know, the, our family had an awful time, so I had with this. Uh, but yeah, I could come to church now and again. I wasn't even coming to church at this point, you know. But I'd come now and again just to show face. And when I came to church, I could be the perfect person, you know. So I was but really in the home. I wasn't that person, you know. I was, I was really, you know, a person that, that put her family through a hard time. And I'd, I admit that now, you know. Uh, and, and eventually I had to stop work, so I did. Uh, and... I was, uh, I was working, uh, I was doing trees, and eventually I just had to say, no, enough's enough. So God put me in my bed, so he did. Yeah, I believe it was God that put me there, because I wasn't willing to listen to him. Uh, and, and the more I, f I still fought against God in this, because I was in pain constantly. And, and I says, why has God saved me? You know, I used to do a bus ministry, just... You know, what Ian was saying just 10 minutes ago, you know, I used to do a bus ministry. I worked with the rehab. I, I did all that stuff. And even, even although but my life, you know, even though I was doing that stuff, I wasn't really putting in to do it right. You know, I wasn't reading. I wasn't praying at this point. Uh, and really my life was, was, was in dis disaster. But yeah, up, up in front of everything, I looked good, you know. Yeah. And, and God put me in my bed, and it wasn't, you know, I really struggled as different things happened in my life over that time. Uh, I remember taking the signs off the van, so I did, and, and that really made, you know, I was really gutted, you know, and I just knew that things were, were going away from me. And then, you know, it just, it's just been one roller coaster after another. And I was in my bed one night. Uh, Oh, and just the beginning of the year, just, just the end of the year there, you know, and I looked at Heather, you know, uh, she was lying sleeping, so she was, and, and I said, and I, my heart started thinking, you know, uh, you know, she, she's so beautiful to me, you know, but how more beautiful is she to God? If I, if I love her so much, you know, uh, then, then how... How much more does God love her? And some cheat flicked in my head that day, you know. Um, and from there on, you know, I've, up until this point, you know, uh, I've really just been back to praising the Lord again and really worshiping Him. And I've really got a heart for people that have been saved, that are saved. You know, I know there is people probably here that are saved, but they're not really living as a Christian. Uh, really deep down, you know, what the people that are like that will know what I'm talking about, so they will, they'll know they'll be able to just look good on the outside, they'll be able to do the things and, and everything when people are about, but really deep down, they're not really, really following God, they're, they're, they're not really doing what God has asked them to do for their life, uh, and, and they're not really getting the full benefit of what God's got to offer. Since, since I've, I've given my life over to God, I've become more mobile, even though I'm in a wheelchair, I've become more mobile, which, you know, is great. I've t I take less medication uh, to be, and I am mobile, even though I'm in a wheelchair. Some days I'm in absolute agony, uh, but I believe that, that these days uh, God wants me to really think of him and think of what he had to suffer, that, that I might be free one day my body is going to be painless, you know. One day I'm going to be free of all this pain, all this suffering. One day I'm going to be able to walk. One day I'm going to be able to kneel before Jesus and, and thank him for the suffering that he, he went through. And this morning, even at the morning meeting, I couldn't even concentrate because of the amount of pain I was in. Uh, and, and yet God's love came through this morning and... 
in, in these moments, I feel a bit of relief from the pain. So it is, and it's in these moments I really feel God speaking to me in my life. Uh, I wasn't really wanting to do this today uh, because I, I'm not really a, a, an open speaker like this. Uh, I'd rather speak to people one-to-one -one, uh, and, and just have a conversation. I enjoy really prayer. I've really, God has really given me an amazing prayer life at the moment. And I've got to watch because the devil's really listened to every word I'm saying now. So he has. And he, because I've confessed that I've got a good prayer life, the, the devil's like a raging lion, the Bible tells us, that he's there to destroy us. And he'll try and destroy that. So he will. And I've got to keep on bringing myself to God every single day. Some days you don't want to do it. Some days are so difficult, so they are, that, that you just don't want to even open your Bible. You don't want to pray. You just feel so, so low, uh, so depressed with the pain. But yet when you open it, God has got an amazing word for me. So he has every time I've opened my Bible. I've started a text group, so I have. I try to text every day to show people what God has shown me. Uh, and if the MD wants to be on that text group, that's fine. Just give me their number and I'll put them onto the text group. Uh, and what the people that are on it, I think are enjoying what I've been putting, putting on it. Uh, and I think I've been opening other people's eyes to see different things within the, within the scripture. So as at the moment, I'm going through Samuel. It's just amazing to watch David and how one day he was just, just the other day I was reading about uh, how he went into Saul's camp so he did, and how he was he knew that God was with him and he sneaked in. You know, this is an army out to look for David and there's tents everywhere and you can just imagine him crawling right up into Saul's tent and grabbing that spear, grabbing that water jug and he's, I can't really remember the guy's name that was with him but he says to him, you know, God has given you them this. God, you can kill him now. But David says, no, this is God's anointed. Uh, I'm not going to touch him. So he takes his spear and water jug. And I, I was saying in prayer, man, I, I would just imagine myself saying, you know, come on, that's it. Finish him off now. You know, get rid of him. So as uh, end of all your hassles, so end of soul chasing you. But David never, he took the spear, took the water jug, and went up and shouted on him and says, look, God, I could have taken your life, and Saul forgives him. But in the next chapter, we see that, that David uh, flees to the Philistines. I was just telling you that earlier. Uh, that David runs away. Uh, he doesn't believe that God can, can save him from Saul. And that's where I am some days, you know. Some days you, you don't believe that God can, can relieve you of the pain, and, and God can do different things in your life. Uh, and, and some days... That's the days where you've got to read and pray. But even though David runs to the Philistines, God continually gives him, uh, he, he's continually fighting the Lord's battles with uh, the enemy, some other enemies, the Kinelites or something, and he's fighting them, and he's winning battles with them. So, he has, so even in the midst of this, this where he doesn't believe that God can save him, he's still winning battles. So he is for God in other ways. And, and that's the days where, you know, if you just lift up your Bible and you pray and ask God and really mean it, ask God to show you these things and God will show you them. So you will, and, and the wee verse, uh, it's really come through uh, and, and I really believe it, I don't know if it's going to come up, it says, taste and see that I am good. Or taste, I can't remember, I've left my Bible at the back. It says, taste and see there it is, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, trusts him, you know, and it's just trusting in God every day. And once you get a taste of God, I don't know why we flee from it. I just don't know why we run away from it continually, why we, days, we want to say no to it. And if we would just take that time just to read that Bible and you get that wee taste, and that's when you realise, wow, what was I thinking about? Why was I thinking that two minutes ago? You know? So as you've got to continually taste them. And he's put his word there for you to taste them every day. And that's what we've got to do as Christians. We've got to continually just look to him for help. And there is going to be hard days. You know, I'm 17 years saved next, next Saturday. So as, and I'm just, 
I feel as if I've wasted my life for God. So I have 17 years saved and I feel that uh, I, I could have done so much more for God. Uh, and for what he has done for me, you know, even though I'm like this, there's still so much more I can do for him. I've just got to find the right thing and really every day I think, oh, I want to get out to work because I was always a worker. I want to work, but, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen at this time. God doesn't want it to happen at this time. I believe that one day God will allow me to do the things that I want to do. So as I've just got to trust in him and believe. So, you know, the people that are in here, they say they're Christians, you know, uh, but they're, in their hearts, they know that they're not following God. They need to pick up God's word and taste them. And that is what will change your life, round about to just be enjoying God's company. So, so that's all I've got to say.